Hello and a warm welcome to Federal Special Program, Capital Beat. Students across the country have begun their new academic session, but they found sweeping changes in their social science textbooks. And if you talk about these changes, all references made to 2002 riots, Mughal era, caste system, social protests, and the social movements arising out of it have been purged out, which means that they have been erased from the textbooks. And uh, this has been done in the name of a rationalization exercise undertaken by NCRT with an aim to reduce the curriculum burden on the students so that they can make a speedy recovery from the learning setbacks during the COVID times. Now, last year, uh, I'm told that these changes were made last year, but since the academic session had already begun, the new books could not be printed. But this year, those books have got printed, but a whole lot of criticism is there that why is the Narendra Modi government rewriting history and especially those portions which are so controversial? So how does it really impact? I'm joined by a very special personality. I'm joined by the renowned historian of the country, Mridula Mukherjee, who's been a former chairperson for the Center for Historical Studies at JNU. She's been a former director of uh, Nehru Memorial Museum and Library. Thank you, Mridula Ma'am, for joining on the Federal. Pleasure having you. Thank you. Uh, Mridula Ma'am, my first question to you is, what do you really say to this kind of a cleansing of uh, the social science textbooks? Would you really say cleansing or purging, deletions? Uh, how, uh, what, what is your really, really your response to this? You know, at a more general level, since you're asking me the question uh, with this uh, use of a very interesting word, cleansing, you know, uh -huh. that's a very dangerous word because it's also used as a substitute for the word genocide. You, uh, there's uh, the word used often is cleansing of entire communities, cleansing of ethnicities, you know, and I think you've hit the nail on the head because what is wo most worrying about the whole exercise is not one specific instance of a deletion, one chapter, two lines here or there, but what lies behind it. What lies behind it is an attempt to erase entire histories, to erase entire identities. What lies behind it is an attempt to suppress uh, the entire uh, parts of our past with a clear-cut political motive in the present because it's directly linked to the fate of millions of our countrymen who belong to certain communities okay we all know that this is all part of what happens in terms of a hate campaign which then results in lynchings it results in riots it results in genocide i want to give you an example this is well known now in the world that before genocides occur, there are telltale signs in the society that you're going in that direction. And one of the telltale signs is you change names. Like example is given of Turkish history. You probably know that there was a huge massacre of Armenians. It's one of the dark spots of Turkish history where millions of Armenians were eliminated in cold blood. Before that, Armenian names were changed. Place names are changed, identities are destroyed, and that creates a kind of uh, base in a society where then you can reach the next stage of physically wiping out uh, people. And, you know, experts in this area who have been studying uh, genocide, right. the, the whole Center for Genocide, for example, there is a genocide museum in the heart of Washington, you know, hmm. where they tell you that these are the telltale signs. That is why we worry. Of course, we worry as historians. It is our duty to tell our children and to tell the future generations, you know, the correct story of our past as historians. But, Ji, right. Yeah. You, 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 you rightly pointed out, but what I don't understand, Ridula Ji, is uh, the manner in which this rationalization exercise has been done in the garb of lessening the burden for the students so that you know they can recover from the learning setbacks and this rationalization exercise which uh, is said to be part of the booklet which was given out and handed out to the schools but uh, this kind of a hue and cry was not made last year 
but uh, the the kind of criticism the kind of uh, uh, the 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 observations which are coming across by the analysts the way they are coming out this year wasn't seen last year so what would you really say to this rationalization exercise i think last year what happened was that some committees went into these issues whatever be the rationale we don't know they are calling it rationalization the important part is that in the name of rationalization how are you being so selective how is right. it that when you drop want to drop something out of an entire syllabus for 11th and 12th in which you have ancient india medieval india modern india you have three books and there's a fourth one also the only chapter that you drop is the one on the moguls from the whole 11th and 12th syllabus in history right. how is it that in the political science book in the name of rationalization this is on the front page of the indian express today right. the only sentences you drop are from a paragraph and that's not even written by a historian it's not a history book it's a political science book so right. for once we are not the only ones you know who are uh, in the line of attack for having written biased history you'll have to condemn the whole community of indian political scientists also now all social scientists right. have written wrong social sciences wrong wrong political science wrong history we are all been a generation of people who have been bringing wrong social science to our students sometimes it feels we are like that now so you can I, say so just, just a moment to come back to that point the sentences which are removed from the paragraph describing the assassination of mahatma gandhi mm -hmm. are ones where nathuram god says name remains in in the current text i have checked it myself gone on to the website and checked it yes what what uh, ritika chopra is saying is absolutely correct mm -hmm. but his his link with rss is eliminated right. that rss was banned by sadar patel you know by the government of india immediately after the assassination those sentences are dropped that gandhi ji was trying to bring about uh, you know hindu muslim unity that his death had the effect of bringing people together all the positive things also about hindu muslim unity are dropped right. now you tell me to reduce the burden on children a paragraph and i checked it it's actually a box in the book right. it's a one page box out of that by eliminating 10 sentences you have reduced the burden on children I mean, how gullible are we supposed to be? Right. Second thing, what Ritika Chopra has pointed out, if you read her article carefully on the front page, this particular deletion was not in the list which was given out last year. Right. Yes. Now, part of the so now this has been smuggled in later. How and why? We don't know. Right. My question is, how do we know that there are not many more such deletions which were not mentioned in the list given out by them last year but which mm -hmm. have now been put in we will have to read line by line to check what all has been deleted at right. the moment we are only discussing what is in the public domain which ncrt has publicly acknowledged that they have deleted mm -hmm. but ritika chopra's investigative reporting has shown that there is more to it than they have admitted now so first and foremost we have to find out She's at least told us on Mahatma Gandhi. She went through it and she found it. But we have not done a line by line check of all the books to see what all has been omitted. So there may be a much more fundamental change going on than being admitted by anyone. I think that's very dangerous, uh, uh, Nilu. But Ridhulaji, what is the kind of impact? Of course, it's a challenge now for the academicians also, as what you're saying that line by line, you'll have to go and check whether these deletions have, uh, you know, gone to the other textbooks as well. But what is the kind of impact it's going to have on the children, on the researchers who are uh, neck deep into history and into the and into its foundations? What is the impact which you really see? You see, the impact this kind of thing has on researchers is like you're sending a message, let's say to a young PhD student or an MPhil student who's just started out on research, right. that this government doesn't like certain kinds of history. Hmm. It doesn't like certain kinds of views. It doesn't like certain kinds of topics. Suppose a student is deeply interested in doing medieval history. Suppose right. they're interested in some aspect of Mughal art or painting or 
social life, cultural traditions, you know, they are going to think unless they are very brave young people and young people are usually brave. So I'm not that worried, you know, but they are going to think before choosing their topics. Are we going to get into trouble? Will my PhD topic get passed? Will somebody raise an objection and say, are there not enough Hindus to study that now you have to start studying Muslim history? Suppose I'm faced as a young person, a question like that in my viva. Am I going to have necessarily the courage, the wisdom, the, the knowledge to be able to answer that and resist it and be willing to sacrifice my PhD admission? These are all, these are political. That is why these things are done, Nilu. They are not done only with the direct objective, which there is, but these are meant to send messages out to society. These are coded messages. For it, and these are coded messages for minorities. Stay in your place. We right. don't have place for you in our history books. That means there is no place for you in our history. Right. But uh, ma'am, I was just looking at the chapters which have been omitted. And uh, you have a chapter which is omitted on Delhi Sultanate. Dynasties like Mamluks, Tughlaqs, Khiljis, Lodhis, Mughals, all have been uh, deleted. Now, will it not create some kind of a black hole in the history? Because the students who are being introduced to uh, history and these chapters. I remember I was in class five or six when I started studying about these dynasties. Now, what? how, how will the students uh, take this new, this deletion? And uh, there are parents yeah, who have been introduced. You just imagine that next weekend you take uh, your child for a picnic to the Lodi Gardens. Right. And they say, what is, where is the name Lodi come from? <laughs> Certainly so not there. It's certainly not there in the history books. But you know what will happen? This is a precursor. In a short while, the Lodi name may change. Right. The Lodi name may be completely eliminated from Lodi Gardens. The name Tughlaqabad may change. Just as in Delhi, many villages which have Muslim sounding names, the proposal is there to change them. Right. Aurangzeb Road's name had already been changed. We know that. Many such mm -hmm. names. Allahabad mm -hmm. name has been changed. Right. But Pridulaji, all these names like Taj Mahal, Tughlaqabad Fort, all that is going to change in the coming days. That's what you are foreseeing? I'm not saying. I mean, this is not because many unthinkable things are happening. Right. That somebody today seriously can question who built the Taj Mahal, Nilu, a few years ago, you would have laughed at them and said, are you mad? Because there are enough records, written records, you know, to show who built the Taj Mahal. There has never been any doubt. But today people are saying, this is Tejo Mahal. It was built by a Hindu. It belonged to some Raja somewhere. Do digging to find out. So anything that way, you know, you can go on uh, trying to change things. I mean, the reaction yesterday when this news came that these changes have been made i was shocked all kinds of political leaders belonging to uh, you know bjp and bjp type of parties started gloating as if some great achievement was there that the a chapter on moguls has been deleted what what kind of self confidence do we have that we delete a chapter and we think we've done something great Absolutely. But Mridula Ji, the, the, the contrary view, which uh, comes, you know, from the right wingers generally is that, you know, history has been biased towards the Hindu leaders. That's what their allegation is. Yeah. I'm asking you for an honest opinion. Do you think that history has been biased and, you know, the due, uh, uh, the due which should have been given to the Hindu rulers or to the people whom the right wingers feel that, you know, they were ignored by history, uh, is, is that allegation correct? I don't, I don't agree with that at all. I think that Indian historians, by and large, the whole community of them, and not any particular person or any particular group or any particular university, I think we have made a tremendous contribution uh, to the writing of Indian history before and after independence particularly after independence. I think generations of Indian historians have done excellent research work, going into new sources, going into archaeology, going into mythology, going into epigraphic uh, evidence, going into a multiplicity of sources to write as 
objective and as complete a history of India as possible. It is absolutely absurd to say that history of Marathas was not been written, that history of Vijayanagar Empire has not been written, that history of the Guptas has not been written, history of Mauryas has not been written. Romila Thapar, who is much reviled as one of those left-wing historians, what was her first work? It was on Ashoka and the decline of the Mauryas. She, her first basic research work is on the Maurya dynasty. She has written on the whole of ancient India. The Muslims were ruling over there. She has spent her whole life writing about ancient India. You know, so I mean, but from different perspectives, bringing out different aspects of the social and economic life of the people also, not just the political, but enough political history is also written. This is completely wrong that the history of Hindu rulers has not been written. History of Harsha, don't you as a child remember reading about all these dynasties? Oh, <laughs> you know, the Pallavas, <coughs> I certainly read about Pallavas, Cholas, Chalukyas, everybody. We all read, uh, ma'am, but, but do you see this agenda? Like you said, that you know there are political motives uh, behind them doing uh, this and taking a step like this. Uh, are they trying to communalize the curriculum as well uh, and you know create that kind of a communal atmosphere by removing of course obvious portions on Mughals are they trying to communalize uh, the curriculum the syllabus uh, you see that motive as well yeah I think that it's very important to see that you see this has been going on from 1977 when the Janta party first came to power and in that there were at that time, BJP was not there, but Jansang uh, ministers, they put pressure on the government then only to change some of the history textbooks. But then they were a small part in a very uh, multi uh, sort of party government. But still, they did try and efforts were made, but there was a lot of resistance and the effort died down. Then in 1999, when the first NDA government came to power. Within the first year or so, they started the process of removing the existing NCRT textbooks, which were written by the likes of Ravila Thapar and Satish Chandra, R. Sharma, Bipin Chandra, saying these are all leftist historians. They have written a biased history. They removed those books and they put in new books. They brought in new books. Now, those books, unfortunately for them, were so substandard that it was easily shown by the rest of the historians community that there are so many errors, they had so many glaring gaps, there were so many just gaffes in them that they could not stand any scrutiny. Then right. once the NDA went out of power and the UPA came back to power, then those books were looked at and they were rejected because they were of a really low standard. And a new uh, set of, uh, a new committee was set up under Professor Krishna Kumar, the famous uh, educationist, who was the director of the NCRT, and a very large body of experts was involved in the rewriting of the social science textbooks. So in history, there was a board of some 10, 12 historians. Similarly, political science advisory board consists of 10, 12. And in history, at least no one author wrote any book. Each book, there were contributions of different chapters by different people. So multiple perspectives, multiple people wrote those uh, books in a now in a different new kind of bringing in also the developments which had taken place, new ways of looking at history, new ways of writing history. All that was brought in into these uh, new books and they were also made more thematic. There were also the production, etc. was uh, you know, made more attractive for children with a lot of photographs and charts and this and that and the other. So they're generally considered to be pretty good books. I may also tell you the life story of the earlier textbooks which were removed in the name that they are written by biased uh, left-wing historians. And there was suggestion was that somehow they had made some great profit by writing those books. I want to tell you that the royalty which those people used to get was never more than around 1000 rupees per year. Okay, and these were great historians who could get a job anywhere in the world. They didn't get promotions by writing textbooks for school children. If they became big professors, it was because of their research work, not because they wrote books for children. 
So as a sacrifice, they wrote books for children. And let me also tell you that after those books were thrown out by the NCRT, they were immediately published by private publishers and they're in the market till today and bringing a lot of royalty now to those authors. Right. So those rejected, biased books, mm -hmm. the public loves them, they want them, they're still reading them 20 years after NCRT threw them out. What does that tell you? But what good will it serve really? I mean, from I'm, I'm purely taking from what uh, you have just said that, you know, the private publishers have taken it up, people are lapping it, uh, lapping up those books. So what good will it really serve? Just removing it from the school curriculum or from the class 12 or the 11th syllabus? What good good is it really going to serve? Well, even you know, school, a political motive, what, what good will it serve really? I'll, I'll tell you what, what good it serves. One, there is a political purpose to it. This is a pet political project of this political formation. RSS, BJP, etc. Especially RSS has had this thing about changing the way they write history. You know, in the RSS schools, which are run by the RSS, the Shishu Mandirs and all that. As you know, there is no regulation in our country. You know, you should know that if your school, the where, where your where your, where the school where your child is studying, a private school, it is only obliged in the CBSC when they give the exam, they follow NCRT syllabus. But all the way till then, they can use any textbook they like from the private market. And there are all kinds of books which are used, good and bad, by schools. And the RSS schools use their own textbooks. They don't use NCRT textbooks. All right. They have got their own books written and they are extremely biased. Many of them are, what shall I say, so biased that if you read them, you will really wonder what kind of uh, uh, person these books will produce because they show certain religions in such a poor light, certain communities in such a poor light, and they are full of exhortations almost uh, to arousing uh, people, you know. And all this is, I'm not saying this, the very same NCRT, which is today changing these, uh, making deletions, they brought out a report in 19, in the early 90s, in right. which they did a survey of all these RSS uh, books, Vidya Bharti books, where they documented the kind of uh, wrong things, harmful things, which those books contain. And that report is still with the NCRT. Do you see this uh, rewriting of history or the rewriting of the NCRT social science textbooks as some kind of the Hindu Rashtra agenda, which BJP keeps talking about, BJP leaders keep talking about? Do you see that in line happening or uh, through this rewriting? I think that's very obvious. I mean, if, if we don't see it, we'll be, uh, you know, we will be uh, myopic, we'll be blind. It's staring us in the face. As I said, this is a very critical, crucial part of their uh, agenda, is the rewriting of history. Because let me tell you also, in my understanding, all communal ideologies, whether Hindu or Muslim or Sikh or Christian, it doesn't matter which they are, they are all based on a certain biased reading of history. When Hitler went after the Jews, he first had to create a history where the Jews were the exploiters. So to create justification for their actions in the present, the communalists always have to create a mythical past in which their community was discriminated against, dominated. So the Hindu to communalist today has to create a past in which Muslims are the oppressors. The Muslim communalist has to create a past in which the Hindus, you know, were uh, oppressors. Say it, this is this is part of the agenda of all fundamentalist stroke communalist uh, political formations. The Sikhs for Khalistan, they have to create a mythology of oppression, of sacrifice, of martyrs. You know, history is a very powerful tool. I also say those who don't have a vision for the future only have the past to go on. What is the vision that they are offering us of the future? Ask yourself. Out of this, what's going on? What are your children? What kind of vision of the future are your children going to get? 
But Prithula Ji, apart from this, of course, uh, the, the RSS agenda and uh, the Hindu Rashtra agenda, you, you had spoken about also about the fundamentalist forces, the way they function. But there are two other references on which I would really like you to respond. And the, the first one is, of course, where they have deleted the portion where Atal Vihari Vajpayee during the 2002 riot said that the, the chief minister has to follow the Raj Dharm. Everybody quotes Vajpayee, uh, you know, uh, quite profusely. And this particular portion deleted from the social side, I mean, the, 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 the political side, the, uh, the sociology textbook. What would you really say to this now? Are they going I to obliterate the history of Vajpayee completely? A person whom they've eologized? in every function? Well, you can see why Vajpayee, what is the status of their living uh, older leaders? They are all part of some Marg Darshak Mandal, uh, you know, uh, who hardly have any influence uh, on what's going on uh, today. So I'm not surprised uh, that uh, they, they are doing this as if uh, that, you know, it's when you have a very definite political agenda, you know, right. and there is a certain, you see, a certain kind of ideology, uh, a regressive ideology, like a racist or a communal ideology, they are of the same types, you know, uh, it's the same kind of ideology, racism, communalism, you know, they also end up being anti-humanist and vicious. Right. So nobody matters to them. Their own forefathers don't matter to them because they are so consumed by this passion, this hatred, right. that it, it, it actually it consumes them as well. It consume, can consume their own past. Right. They are blind then to all that, you see. So we must understand why it is dangerous. Anything which is so myopic, which has so many blinkers, is very dangerous for a society. Absolutely. Quick uh, two, three questions more, uh, Bridharaji, before I wind up the interview. The second reference which I was wanting to make, apart from Atal Vihari Vajpayee's statement, was this: uh, the chapter in emergency where the references on arrests of political workers has been deleted. Then how these protests turned into social movements in India, the rise of the popular movement, that also has been deleted. Now, do you think that there is somewhere down the line an effort to, you know, send out a message that no kind of protest is allowed in the country, that freedom to protest should not be there. Are they going to inculcate this sense at the school level within the students? And what kind of students are we really going to nurture them? Yeah, absolutely. You're 100% right. Otherwise, please tell me what is wrong with the, a chapter on the movements in India. After all, those movements were against the government of the day. So it is not as if they care so much about Nehru or Indira Gandhi that they're trying to hide movements which were there against them, you know. So obviously the purpose is to deny this knowledge to students that they are in fact legacies of a history of struggle, isn't it? Why do we teach the freedom struggle to our students? Why do we want to teach it? To inspire them, you know, that there is a whole legacy of struggle against oppression. Whether it was the British who were oppressing us or today's, uh, there is any ideology or any system which oppresses us. Hmm. You as human beings should be aware of the human legacy of struggle, where humans have stood up against uh, wrongdoing, stood up against injustice. So that is something which we want uh, our students should be. That's why, why do we teach French Revolution? Tell me. Why do we teach American revolution? Because the history of revolutions is a history of entire mankind. Absolutely. Where a human across, being feels elevated. No? For the world across, everybody is reading, uh, I mean, does re read about the Nazi Holocaust. Every They have not deleted yeah. portions of it. But ma'am, my question now is that supposing like what you said in the beginning, that who knows what all they have deleted from which all textbooks. How can one really stop this pattern? Uh, will Can academicians or the intellectuals come together, go to the court, uh, stop the government from these uh, kind of deletions? Uh, what is the way out? How do we raise this debate that this kind of a deletion is not right, it's not fair uh, when it comes to uh, the social sciences? Look, one, I would again go back to history, that as far as historians and intellectuals and many uh, other civil so people in civil society are concerned, Right from 1977, they have been at the forefront of resistance. 
Right. From word go, there were protests. I still remember the 1977 protests. We all participated in them. Huge meetings used to be held in universities all over the country protesting. Similarly, in 2001, when it started the Indian History Congress, bodies of students and teachers, we were there in, J in JNU. We, I remember organizing workshops, detail. We went through each chapter by chapter, each of the books to see what was wrong. Indian History Congress appointed a special committee to go into those books to see what was and took up the whole thing. In fact, this became an issue, I think, if you, you might recall, in the 2004 elections. Right. And when the new government came to power, the UPA uh, won, uh, the, 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 the education minister, Arjun Singh, in fact, used the word detoxification. Yes. That was yes. needed. Words like famous editors like Veer Sangvi use the word Talibanization. You know, we had brought out a booklet at that time, putting all these editorials together, putting all the deletions and everything together as a kind of campaign book with which we then campaigned in different parts, uh, in different universities and, you know, but we are not political, historians are not a political party. They can only do in a limited way. They can speak to you. They can write articles. You know, and going to court, you know, once in a while it works, sometimes it doesn't work because the court only looks at the law. You know, and the NCRT will be having all the powers to delete or not to delete. So the court also beyond a point can't help you. Right. So I think the answer, as always, lies with the people. Right. With the political parties, with the people of India, with civil society organizations, to, and with parents. I think parents like you who have young children, who should be worried about what is being taught to their children. Parents need to be worried and come out. What kind of, you want your children to do well in life. You want them to be also competitive. You may want them to become maybe today world citizens. Are they going to do that with a myopic understanding of the world? You know, what is happening actually, those who can afford it, they try to then move their children out of CBSC, ISC, put them into IB board. Right. You go to IB board and see the history they teach over there in this country only. So what will happen is the rich, the elite, the upper ends of the middle class will shift out of government schools as they are already shifting out of Indian universities and sending their kids abroad. You, you do a sweat where you make it more and more difficult for children to get into college. What do middle class parents do instead of fighting and protesting? They collect money and send their child abroad. Chalo, agar America nahi bheja to Singapore to kam se kam bhej dete hai. You know, so I mean, this is, but we have to, the answer has to be to fight here. Right. You have a choice of sending your child abroad. What about the poor? The lower middle class, the ordinary person, how many people will go abroad? How many kids will do IB? So Majority right. kids will do CBSC, they will do ISC, they will do the state board, the UP board, where these books are going to be changed. They will do the Gujarat board, where they are already teaching all this kind of history for the last many years. Well, ma'am, uh, history writing, of course, is an evolving process. People do keep writing. People feel that, you know, there were certain icons or there were certain figures who were ignored. People write about it. Say, for example, I was reading somewhere that when you uh, read about Rani Lakshmi Bai, then there was a figure called uh, Chalkari Bai also. So she also has to be given her due. And I was reading it somewhere that, so that is fine. The new figures, new icons prop up in history and that history can be written. But deletion of portions which are already there, which are already etched out in the books, does it not tantamount to intellectual dishonesty, which this government is resorting to? Yeah, it is. I think it, it's a very bad thing. You know, I mean, uh, now to, they have now they have removed it from the books altogether. Right. But you know, earlier also, I still remember, uh, in uh, like they have sent last year, the list of deletions was sent to the schools. Right. In the form of an errata, the NCR, NCRT director said that on TV yesterday. I Tell me that. when such a document reaches a school, the principal calls the teacher and says, now in your history class in class 12 or 10 or wherever, these are the sentences you are supposed to delete. Don't teach these. What does a teacher have to do? Teacher goes to the class, says, children, take out your textbooks. And then she has to tell them, you please cross out these sentences. 
firstly what kind of message are you sending to the children what are they going to understand okay here is something which is written in a aren't they going to ask why and secondly if i know a little bit of human psychology you are making sure that the children will read them and the teachers will also read them very carefully because whenever you are told not to do something you get interested in it you may not even have looked at it twice but today i certainly read thrice the indian express story about what was deleted we all did the same <laughs> we all did that right so i mean you know it's also there's an irony over here in all this yes. you know what what is planned what actually happens what is seen on the ground how children and teachers are going to react to it what messages you are going to send i mean some i think government should also have a little more self respect absolutely no, how do you think, think that teacher in the school yes. is thinking about ncrt saying are ye to roz kuch aisa bhej dete hai aaj ye sentence kaat do aaj ye chapter gira do what respect are they going to have for ncrt please tell me absolutely they do it because it is their job they can't afford to lose their jobs and say hum nahi karenge but what respect will they have you please tell me i would definitely want to uh, read out a quote which i was reading on the social media and with that i'll end the program that those who can't write history they erase history i leave it to the viewers uh, subscribe yeah. to our channel send us your feedback thank you so much pradula ma'am it was wonderful having you on the program thank you thank you subscribe to the federal's youtube page for more interesting updates